On the 11th of January, 1944, the 8th Air Force targeted aircraft production facilities in Germany. These are the 401st and the 351st bomb groups. This formation of bombers is headed to the Fockewolf production facility at Oschersleben. There are over 50 B-17 aircraft shown in this image. They were the lead formation, followed by a middle and a trailing formation, a total of 117 aircraft altogether. This was the 14th mission flown by the 401st Bomber Group. They'd only lost one aircraft so far, but that was about to change. On this day, the 8th Air Force put 663 bombers into the air. Mostly B-17s, but there were 138 B-24s among those too. They were to be escorted to and from the targets by P-47s. A newly formed P-51 group, the 354th Fighter Group, based out of Boxted, was to provide cover for the bombers over the target. Due to poor weather, the 8th Air Force recalled the bomb raid. Some bomber groups ignored the recall as the weather didn't seem that bad. It was about 30% cloud layer, so they continued on to their targets. Unfortunately, some of the P-47 escorts that were with them did obey the order and turn back. As a result, some of the largest bombing losses since the two Schweinfurt raids the previous year occurred on this day. For the lead groups, almost 25% of the bombers didn't return. The Luftwaffe put up a pretty stiff defense that day. Bombers were attacked en route and returning from the targets as well as over the targets. The 351st was among the lead bomb groups. It lost 6 of 23 bombers. I believe the 401st lost 11. Of the 7 bomb groups that attacked Oschersleben, 34 aircraft failed to return. 83 returned damaged. Overall, including the Halberstadt and Brunswick portions of the mission that day, the 8th Air Force lost 60 of 663 bombers. The Luftwaffe lost 39 of 207 aircraft. The entire 354th Fighter Group forms up over their base at Boxted, England. The 354th was the first American fighter group in Europe to fly the P-51 Mustang. They were part of the 9th Air Force, but they flew escort missions for the 8th Air Force. Here, the 401st and 351st bomb groups are over Europe. These bombers are the lead formation of the Oschersleben raid. Two more formations are following a few miles behind. As the P-51s crossed the North Sea, the Star Stud group above provided cover for the two squadrons below. There were 49 P-51s that left England. James Howard led the group. He's flying Ding Hao. Two years earlier, Howard flew for the American volunteer group, the Flying Tigers, in China. Howard was born in China, and he spoke some Mandarin. According to Howard, Ding Hao means very good. Whatever P-47 escort was left had turned back by this point. Here the bombers are 15 miles from the target and just starting their bomb run. Rocket carrying Messerschmitt 110s trailing the bombers use this opportunity to begin their attack. The Messerschmitt 110s not only attack this lead bomber formation, but the two formations following it as well. The three formations that attacked Oberschleben were separated by several miles each. Bomber crews also reported seeing Messerschmitt 210s.
50 caliber machine gun range. Day, the 351st Fighter Group reported losing three bombers to rockets. They also reported there was no flak over the target, although they did see some flak on the return trip. In general, the bombers are carrying 12 500-pound bombs, but there were some mention of 100-pound bombs as well. The low bomb group on the right was the 351st bomb group. The lead bomb group was a mix of 401st and 351st bombers, and the high group on the left was all 401st group bombers. Bombs away! Bombs away! Bombs away! Bombs away! As the bombers bombs approached the target, bombs away. Bombs away. the lead group bombed first, bombs and some of their bombers immediately bombs started turning right crossing over the low bomb group, preventing them from dropping their bombs. They had to release bombs on an alternate target. This is a depiction of Oschersleben. This lead formation was just one of three to bomb them. The bombers were at an elevation of between 18 and 19,000 feet. That day the wind was from 282 degrees at 30 miles per hour. Here's an aerial photo of the actual Oschersleben bomb damage after all three formations had bombed it. About 10 bombers from the 351st bomb group who didn't get to bomb the primary target chose an alternate target of opportunity somewhere in here. Here the bombers are flying on a 280 degree heading back to England. The preferred attack at this time in the war was a head-on attack, increasing the bomber's surface area to hit, minimizing the time over the target. Fighters would attack sometimes eight line abreast to make it difficult for the bombers to focus on any one particular fighter. As the P-51s approached the lead bomber formation, Howard ordered his squadron to stick with the lead formation and for the other two squadrons to proceed on to the middle and the rear formations.
Bomber crews reported being attacked by groups of two to five aircraft. In some renditions, there was talk of a mass of 30 aircraft attacking the bombers. In Howard's recollection, he said his engagements were all with single fighters. Approaching bombers from head on like that, unannounced, is such a good idea. When recounting the story, Howard mentioned that he approached the bombers gingerly, flying alongside to make sure he was recognized. It's not clear how many members of the Star Stud formation were defending the lead bomber formation at this time. Could be anywhere from 2 to 14 P-51s. Here are the other two squadrons in the 354th Fighter Group proceed to the middle and rear formations of bombers. In some accounts, it seems like Howard had moved ahead of the bombers to try to break up a group of 30 fighters that were forming there. But in other accounts, it seems as if Howard was behind the bombers all the time, flying between the lead formation and the middle formation. He reported diving and zooming often. Initially, all four of his guns were working, but they gradually went inactive. One of the guns froze up. So he had four guns, then two guns, then one gun. He continued to press on his attack, diving and zooming unarmed at enemy fighters to try to drive them away. He tended to downplay what he was doing. He claimed there may be were 30 German aircraft in the vicinity, but they all attacked singly. And being the only American fighter in the area after his wingman left to, to fly towards the middle formation, Howard claimed he knew every aircraft he met was an enemy aircraft, but they didn't know which dot in the sky was him. Howard reported that a 190 crossed his path. He claimed when the German pilot saw Howard on his tail, the pilot bailed out. By this point in the engagement, Howard had lost his wingman, who had proceeded to the middle bomber formation. Howard returned to the lead bomber formation.
he only had one gun left. Heading into the bombers was a JU-88. Howard drove it off, but it climbed back up again. This repeated several times. After 30 minutes of combat and low on fuel, Howard climbed up to the bombers one last time. Seated home. Along the way home, he encountered three stray Mustangs and formed a flight with those. For this day, Howard claimed two aircraft destroyed, two probably destroyed, and two damaged. One of the bomber crews who witnessed this claimed he got six enemy aircraft, and he received the Congressional Medal of Honor for his heroic efforts fighting alone and often without guns against superior odds. None of the bombers was lost during the time he was with them. I think the implication was none of the bombers were lost on the return trip, although Howard only escorted them for 30 minutes, so it's possible they encountered more enemy fighters on their travels through Europe. Some P-47s may have provided escort on the return trip. James Howard may not have been flying his personal aircraft, Ding Hao, on his big day on 11 January. Ding Hao evolved during the time Howard flew it. Originally, it had the birdcage-type canopy. That later was replaced with a Malcolm Hood. In general, the, the whole 354th fighter group started removing the stripe from the vertical stabilizer, and additional victory and sweep markings were added to Howard's aircraft. For his actions that day, Howard received the Congressional Medal of Honor. He was also interviewed by Life magazine, apparently, and a lot of photographs were taken of him for that story. In his 1991 autobiography, Roar of the Tiger, James Howard said he was born in Canton, China. His father was a USI surgeon. He left at age 14 to move back to the United States. Howard joined the Navy as he had a need for excitement. In 1939, he graduated as a naval aviator. At age 24, he flew F-2Fs and F-3Fs off carriers with 60 carrier landings. He trained in the F-4F. But in June of 1941, Howard, along with a few other people, resigned from the Navy to join the American Volunteer Group. He seemed to have a fixation for the Far East. Even when he became commanding officer of the 356 Fighter Squadron, he had hoped to take them to the Far East, but they went to Boxted, England instead. With the American Volunteer Group, he flew P-40Cs that were made for the British, but they no longer wanted because they were obsolete. He had forgotten most of his Mandarin by the time he went back to China. He flew 60 combat flying hours in China, and a lot of his duties were non-flying as a technical officer. He had six and a third victories. Some of those were on the ground. He left the American Volunteer Group in July of 1942 joined the 4th Air Force in January of 43 and flew P-38s. He joined the 354th Fighter Group at age 30. 
Howard's first European theater victory was 109 on the 20th of December, 1943. He claimed three German aircraft before the 11 January mission. Howard claimed there were 30 B-17s versus 30 110s, 109s, and 190s during his 11 January performance. He was promoted from major to lieutenant colonel. He became CO of the 357th Fighter Group in February of 1944, but after Martin was lost, Howard returned to the 354th Fighter Group as the commanding officer. He claimed 11 European victories, and the last one was on 13th of April 1944, before I believe he took a desk job for the 9th Air Force. He was assigned to Guam, but victory in Japan Day happened before he could get there. He retired from the military after eight years, saying that was enough. But he stayed in the reserves for a lot longer, rising to the rank of Brigadier General.